So it's taken me 90 days to finish this project. I melted my computer at one point in the process, but I think it's worth it. I took a challenge from Jeff, combined still video and audio into one unit of play. So we'll see. On February 14th, 2009, my fiance, Mr. Jeffrey Warren Pickett and I departed for a two week adventure in Russia. Our micro-budget feature film, The Skyjacker, had been invited to screen at the 7th Annual Spirit of Fire debut film festival in Hantimansisk, an autonomous okrug in the greater Siberia region. In total, we spent about 34 hours in the air, getting to, from, and around Russia, including our side trips to St. Petersburg and Moscow. We mostly flew on Aeroflot, featured on just a few episodes of Air Emergency. Life sans jetways was surreal, especially with jet lag in the snow. We had brand new planes, old planes that look like motorhomes, and Russian comrades that set off the smoke alarm in flight. On the way home, we got the exit row. Thank you, gods of travel. Jeff was able to make an outfit out of all the clothes that he finds too dorky to wear at home including an air traffic controller jacket. I was saved by my black puffy coat and my black boots that had been in the Goodwill pile before I left. Although we both rocked ridiculously expensive silk long underwear, we had nothing compared to the fur. Russian food gets five stars in my book. We had borscht basically once per day. The sour cream was to die for on everything. Pelmini are similar to ravioli. We had them stuffed with wild mushroom and Jeff even had them stuffed with bear. There was a little too much mayonnaise used for my liking, but I was a huge fan of everything pickled. We adopted a blini diet, savory blini with corn, blini with fish eggs, and sweet blini with berries and cream. My favorite meal was at a Georgian restaurant, cheese bread, bean salad, and shashlik, which is grilled meat on a skewer. We also found plenty to drink, Jeff sampled homemade mead at a craft fair. The beer was plentiful and mostly light. We developed a newfound appreciation for vodka and traditional vodka snacks, which typically included pickles, herring, mushrooms, and lard. Russian cognac was also a delightful discovery for us both. Cyrillic used to be so mysterious to me, but I did a pretty good job of figuring it out. As always, Jeff was great with the language. I could have purchased a Matryoshki doll for every man, woman, and child I know. The same goes for Fabergé eggs. Здравствуй, Chef, from Saint Petersburg. The theme of the day is eating and drinking. <laughs> Reindeer coming up. <laughs> I would go back to Peter in a heartbeat. Show me that city in every season, and show me eye candy. We stayed in the best hotel, the Angleterre, overlooking St. Isaac's Cathedral. Like so many things in Russia, the hotel was old and regal and comfortable. There was a beautiful sauna and workout room. St. Petersburg was gray, windy, cloudy, and dark. The colorful buildings stood out. The sun came out once for 10 minutes. It was so precious and bright. Thank the gods of weather. To walk around Peter in the winter is to walk on icy, brown snow-covered streets and sidewalks. The Russian ladies wear high-heeled boots, yet our shoes are long gone. We found a home away from home in Peter at a chain called Coffee House. They offered a recession special, $3 breakfast that served us well in the wee hours of the morning when we were awake before the city. Uh, Peter and Paul Cathedral which uh, offers I must say the best view in the city in my opinion
Some non-traditional highlights include our trip to a museum of pickled human body parts, the Dostoyevsky-inspired idiot restaurant, a majestic post office, and a grocery store with a cat. There is something for everyone in Peter, astronomers, book lovers, and pig collectors. My most treasured experience from Peter was our visit to the Marinsky Theater for a ballet performance. Jeff and I felt warmly welcomed by our fellow Russian spectators. The athleticism and beauty of the dancers captivated both of us. Thinking back, I have a feeling that ballet performance will linger in my mind. Back in Moscow, before our flight to Hanty Mansisk, the festival put us up in a cozy hotel in the Arbat district. We were a bit intimidated by the city, but I feel thankful to have stayed in this particular area that we probably wouldn't have ventured to on our own. We conquered the pedestrian-only street and ventured out to an art museum and the Georgian restaurant. The Spirit of Fire Film Festival was beyond my wildest imagination. It was just what Mr. Plokhov had promised at that breakfast in Warsaw. I could take hours to describe every detail of our experience. It really was all new and different. We were greeted at the airport with flowers and music and vodka and snacks. During our first day, we met the judges at a press conference, and we walked down the red carpet in the snow with people cheering and fire blazing. The opening ceremony was an affair. We sipped on cognac at the Arts Center for the Talented Children of the North amidst costumes from a new release of a film of Anna Karenina. <laughs> Festival headquarters were at our hotel, a winter retreat. The architecture gave an obvious nod to the native people from which the town took its name, the Hanti and the Mansi. The snow was so white and the sky was blue. The hotel was a playground for young and old. <laughs> As promised, the festival provided us with quality gear that kept us warm for the entire six days we were in Siberia. We each received a pair of impenetrable bibs and jacket with a fur-lined hood. We also were given locals-only yak boots and a foxtail cap. These came particularly handy at the late night party in the snow. The festival provided a shuttle bus that took us around town to the movies and on excursions. Although the native people have lived in the area since before the 11th century, Hanti Mansisk was established as a work settlement in the 1930s and has only become modern in the past 10 years. The town boasts one of the world's best biathlon centers. A particularly special excursion was to the Outdoor Museum to learn more about how the Hanti and the Mansi tribe live. We were able to see animal traps, food storage, and a dwelling. When I go to film festivals, I come home with new friends from around the world. The closing ceremony was emotional. We thought our movie just might be the right kind of weird that would win an award at a Siberian fest. After the summer camp-esque slideshow and an electric violin solo, I did shed a couple tears when we did not receive a prize, at least Hussein won. Leaving Hanti Mansis was like returning to Earth. We called this trip our pre-wedding honeymoon because we're planning on getting married sometime in the year of our Lord, 2009. Our final two days in Moscow were as romantic as they come. We took advantage of recession specials at Le Royal Meridien National directly across the Kremlin. It was a hotel fit for a king and a queen. Although the wet cold was particularly biting in Moscow, our hotel was the perfect location for exploring. After the Kremlin, the Armory, the Goom Shopping Mall, and the Trechikov Art Museum, my lasting vision is of Red Square at night. Making movies does ruin lives. Maybe so does marriage. But the Skyjacker has also enhanced my life to a degree that I could never have predicted. As Jeff says, like a lion who has tasted human flesh, I want more.